Hello and welcome to Formation, a weekly conversation for followers of Jesus. My name is Shannon Moore and I'm here with... Kara Watts. Kara, we made it through Easter. We did it. Uh, of course, Easter doesn't end on right. Easter Sunday. We have uh, you know, 50 days of the Easter mm-hmm. season, the Easter tide on the way before we get to Pentecost. And so um, Renee's not with us today, but we thought that uh, we've been in the Gospel of Luke for these past six, seven weeks or so, uh, talking about the Gospel of Nobodies. And so we thought today we would talk about some of the other Gospel accounts, the other Easter stories that we find in more resurrection and different ideas. They're all different. They're so different. I mean, you got the basic thing that's the same, but there's lots of important details that are right that are different. Because in Luke's gospel, as we talked about last Mm -hmm. week, uh, we have the three named women and other women. We don't know how many there were who went to the tomb and found that it was empty and then went and told the men who didn't believe them. And so... The idle tale. Yeah, it was yeah. just an idle tale. It makes me mad every Dude. time. I'm, every still, time I'm still mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we have uh, these other accounts too. Right. So Yeah, and I think that when we hear the Easter story or when we re-remember the Easter story, we remember a combination of all of them. And so to really break it down and look... At each of those gospel stories, is there's some there's some wisdom that we can gain from paying attention to the different right. Parts it's just of it. like we combine the Christmas mm-hmm. stories right. often, um, but I'm always much more drawn to the story of the shepherds at Christmas mm-hmm. than I am to. But but I'm sure some people really like the story of the Magi. Right. Um, but if you look at a at a, a crash, you're going to mm-hmm. see all of them, even though they don't <laughs> Every, appear. Everyone gathers together <laughs> in, the same, in the same story. So I'm, I'm excited to talk a little bit today about some of these other Easter stories and find out what the differences are. You're going to start us off? Yeah, let's start off and we will uh, be looking at Matthew. Okay. And so when we look at Matthew, the final chapter, um, chapter 28, um, and I'll just start reading at the first verse. Um, so just kind of think about what we heard about people showing up, but this is kind of what happens um, in that moment. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly, so they're already on their way, Mm -hmm. and then suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him... The guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Um, And then he tells them to go on and tell. But just that, it's so interesting to me. Like I feel like I've always known or believed or heard that when they show up, when the women show up, the stone is already... Mm-hmm. Gone, like this seems to be like they're caught in the midst of the story. Yeah, it is happening before them. So, with the the story that we heard last week mm-hmm. in Luke, we still have Mary Magdalene. Right, she's the constant. Mm-hmm. Um, this says um, another another Mary, Mary and Could Luke be the mother, said, yeah, you know, mother of James, the Mary, Mary right. the mother of James. Um, not sure, but and then Joanna was uh-huh. listed, and she's not listed here in this right. story. Uh, but when they got to the tomb, they were perplexed. Right. And one commentary said they weren't angry, they weren't upset or dismayed, they were just curious. What's going on here? Right, because the tomb is, and, you know, stone was moved, right. he, tomb was empty. But right. here, as you said, they see. Yeah, uh, and the guards see. I mean, they're... They're not, uh, women aren't alone. They're not alone. At the, right. at the site. And, and they are walking... I just imagine as they're walking up and the earthquake happens and then the stone is rolled away and it is empty and that the guards fell like dead people yeah. <laughs> at the at the significance of that moment. They, there's also the women that we talked about in Luke had a very specific purpose. Right. They were going to prepare the mm-hmm. body. They had with them spices right. that they were going to bring. And here it just says they went to look. Right. At the tomb. Right. They went to just check it out. And I guess if you look a little bit in the prior chapter in Matthew, um, it talks about, um, 
you know, the person that asked for Jesus' body and um, the rich man from Arimathea mm-hmm. named Joseph, um, who was also a disciple, who went and asked. And so, it, you know, uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they were a part of that. And so I, I don't know if they were just kind of going back to see how that all went, just to go, I don't know, going to visit well, their friend. Right. I mean, we, I mean yeah, I, I, it's a common practice sometimes. It is. Um, yeah. a lot of, I have a lot of... I've I've never been one myself to right. to go visit right. a grave. I mean, I've done it a few times right. with my mother, right. um, but I know for some people it's very important yes. to go visit the, right. the grave right. of a loved one. Yeah, so it's just it's an interesting moment to be going, and even, and especially to imagine that that's why they were going. Mm-hmm. They were going to visit their loved one that they had lost and then all of a sudden to be caught up in the in the midst in, of the story. in the midst of the of the mm-hmm. resurrection um is really fascinating and and so we we continue on there and we see that um you know this angel tells them to go um quickly and tell the disciples um he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to galilee there you will see him this is my message for you so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples Suddenly, we see that word again, mm-hmm. Jesus met them and said, greetings. <laughs> and they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to do what they've been told to do by this angel. And Jesus shows up. Greetings. <laughs> Whereas in Luke, they're still in Jerusalem. Right, they're still in mm-hmm. Jerusalem. And so, yeah, and then... Um, that just grabbing onto his feet, I just, what reverent, I mean, they didn't hug him. Right. They, I mean, that to me implies that they fell to their, mm-hmm. fell to their knees, overcome. Um, it does make me laugh. Greetings. It's like, hi. hi. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> um, and Do you have greetings? Is, does your, mine says, says greetings. greetings? Yeah, okay. greetings. I wonder what other <laughs> <laughs> translations might say. <laughs> Um, and then is there interesting too this uh-huh. cover up story that we yes. have that's that we find yes. in Matthew that the the chief priests um, said you know told the guards to tell everybody that the disciples came and and stole them away with that and they had to kind of take the fall we fell asleep yeah. is the yeah. that's the story that we're using right. that that we're going and, with and tell everybody tell all the important people this and if if the really important people find out we'll cover for you too but yeah that. The fear of those who are in power right. is so significant. And even today, yeah. I mean, we still see the same thing. Well, you know, you may hear X, Y, Z, but this is, this is our story yeah. and we're sticking we're, to it. Yeah, just Because this is going to make us mm-hmm. somehow look at both right. better and incompetent. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we hired these guards who fell asleep on the job. I wonder what happened to them. I bet they got in big trouble. Well, they made some money. By telling that story, yeah. so I, I don't know. Took the money. Yeah, and, and to me, the really well, I interesting... I bet they never got hired as guards No, they again, probably though. were not guarding mm-hmm. anything. In, anything important from that moment on. Maybe they didn't need to. Maybe not. They had, Maybe. They had something they, they had, could... They had some power. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, in the very end of this uh, chapter, in the very end of Matthew, um, catches up with Jesus when he meets the 11 disciples. Now, the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Familiar? I think I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that that great commission, great commission of go ye therefore um, and make make disciples. disciples. Yeah. Um, does anything in particular stand out from that portion? That some doubted. Yeah, that's what gets me too. Mm-hmm. And Jesus doesn't go through the process of saying, you know, no, it really is me. Mm-hmm. He just says, I give you. I give you all that I have now. Go, go tell people. And to me, it's maybe okay to doubt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he didn't try to fix it for them. Right. 
He didn't try. I like that. Yeah. We don't have, you know, what we'll find in other gospels of, right. you know, here's the proof. Yeah, here, let me show me you. Yeah, this look, and, here, this is really, he just said. But just a simple, I'm yeah. here, this is what I have, this is what I'm giving you. Yeah. Got a job to do, peace out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and not only, he didn't, you know, Jesus didn't say, only those of you that have no doubt, keep going. Everybody right. else, dismiss. He addresses them all in one one group to go and teach everything that he's taught them. It's and a lot. It it ends sort of mysteriously. There's no rising right. up and Where did Jesus ascending into heaven. You know, then what? <laughs> to just stand on the mountain for yeah, I never <laughs> Shoot, thought about that. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be here, yeah, yeah for a while. That's interesting. Yeah. So what so about there. Mark? Mark is um, such a short gospel. Mark is such a short gospel, and yet we find some interesting uh, kind of Jesus is here uh, added on perhaps to the end. Mm. There is some, um, in my particular, um, the translation I have, it, it talks about the shorter ending of Mark mm-hmm. and the longer ending of Mark. Right. And so the shorter ending was simply, um, and all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter, and afterward Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Well, the end. That's, okay. how mine, that's how that's how mine in. ends. But then there's the longer that begins in verse nine. That's how mine is. is how does your out. verse in, eight end? Uh, verse eight ends with uh, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. What translation is that? Oh, you know what? That is the added shorter version. Okay. So if we go back to, that's the parenthetical part. Okay. If we go back okay. to eight. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror, amazement. Had there we them. go. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And right. then there's the parenthetical potential original ending that okay. I read. Um, but then there's the longer ending that is believed to have been added on later. Well, and before we read that, let's touch base on who was there. Yes. Um, again, we have Mary Magdalene, mm-hmm. and then we have Mary, the mother of James. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we've got two, and then, and then Salome, Salome, who is has not appeared in the right. other. And again, they're bringing spices to anoint Jesus' mm-hmm. body. That's why they're there. And then they get there, yeah. you know, asking where the tomb, right. how they're going to roll away the stone. But it already is. It had right. already been rolled right. away. And now we have one young man. Mm-hmm. Uh, dressed in white, telling them not to be afraid. Yeah. And then, you know, that original or whatever, that shorter ending says they didn't tell anyone because they were afraid. They were afraid. And then yeah. we've got that parenthetical ending that you just read. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then we see um, Jesus appearing several different times. Mm-hmm. Um, and now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. Mm -hmm. So we have one person that he um, appeared to. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. What do you think that means? I think that's a nod to maybe the Emmaus story that we find in Luke. I don't know. Maybe so. Yeah, it's I, know, I know Mark is earlier, but right. we think these were written later. So yes, I think Post maybe somebody was trying to make some connections. Yeah, connect these gospel yeah. stories. Yeah, and then he appears to the eleven um, as they were sitting at the table, and um, he upbraided them. That's what mine says mm-hmm. for their lack of faith and stubbornness. Rebuked is what mine yeah. says. For they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. Very different from the Matthew right. account. Very different. And then he tells them again to go into the world to proclaim the good news. I think I'm not a Greek scholar by any means. Um, you know, I can hardly order at the Greek restaurant. But um, I think even the even in these English translations, the right. tone, the style are so different. Right from what we find in the rest of Mark, that they had to be added earlier. And at some point, somebody had to say, you know, they were afraid and didn't say anything. It's not a great (laughs) great Easter gospel story. Um, But I like that original, that shorter Mm -hmm. ending, because 
uh, we know that eventually they did. Right. Or we wouldn't be talking about it. we wouldn't be it. telling the story. Yeah. yeah. That's true. And But it's also funny that somebody found it very important to, to, to fix it. Yes. It reminds me of that, <laughs> that story from, um, I guess it was in Italy several years ago where uh, the woman was trying to clean the frescoes and ended up messing it up. She tried to repaint it. <laughs> and it's a really funny, the, the picture is just, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. And you just can tell she was really trying to fix the, to mistake, fix the mistake that she made. And somebody thought yes. that a mistake had been As made. Something, is, we need, something we need was a left more out. Here. we got to fill this out a little bit. So, <laughs> Oh, people, that's yeah. what they'll do. All right. Well, let's, John? let's look at John which is fast becoming my favorite gospel. I, I know that. Um, yes. So we're in verse uh, chapter 20 of John. Um, again, it's the first day of the week. We have Mary Magdalene by herself. So she's in all four. Right. Uh, but this time she's by herself. Um, she gets to the tomb. The stone has been rolled away. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, uh, the one Jesus loved. Mm-hmm. Um, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know what they've done with him. So Peter and the other disciple go, and they're the ones who first discover now. They go in and right. see that it's uh, the linen strips in which he were, was wrapped are in there. Um, and so uh, they didn't understand what was going on, and the disciples went back to where they were staying. But Mary stayed. She was outside of the tomb. I'm going to start reading here at the middle of verse 11. She wept and bent over to look in and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. This is the only gospel that specifically calls the messengers Mm -hmm. angels. Matthew said two men. Yes. I think Luke said a man. A man. Uh Mark, was it two? We just Uh, read it. I can't remember. I think there were two people. Uh, But here it says angels. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other accounts refer to dazzling white or something like that. But here we have angels. Why are you crying, they ask. And she said, they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've taken him. Um, And he says, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? And that's Jesus. She turns around and sees Jesus standing there, and he asks her what she's looking for. But she doesn't realize that it's Jesus, Uh, which reminds me of the... Um, the, the the remark that Renee said a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at the Emmaus mm-hmm. story that he his resurrected body must it's have different. looked quite different. Yes, and so she thinks he's the gardener and says, "Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him." And he simply says her name, mm-hmm. and in saying her name, uh, she recognizes who he is. Uh, she grabs hold of him. He says, don't do that. <laughs> you got th- you got to go tell the story. And then we find Jesus appearing to the disciples. And again, the famous story of doubting right. Thomas, quote unquote, doubting right. Thomas. And Jesus uh, in verse 27 uh, saying, you don't believe me, put your finger in my hands, reach your hand into my side. Um, all that's really interesting story. But I want to make sure we get to this, this story that happens right. afterward in chapter 21. Uh, Jesus appears uh, again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Uh, they've Simon Peter and some of the others have been out fishing in the boat. I think maybe they've gone back to their old career. Right. Uh, you know, back at work. Back. Yep. They took their few days and now they're back. Yeah, back to what they know, yeah. what's familiar, and hadn't caught anything. And um, Jesus is standing there on the shore, and he calls out and says, "Have you got any fish?" And they're like, "No." And in verse 6, he says, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And they did and were unable to haul in the net because of how large the catch was. And then in verse 7, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped in the water, which is really kind of funny (laughs) to put your clothes on to jump in the water. Uh, And so the rest of them followed in the boat. Um, and so they have breakfast. Jesus has, they cook fish and have breakfast on the beach. And um, then in verse 15, Peter sort of pulls Peter, uh, Jesus kind of pulls Peter mm-hmm. aside and, and tests him in a right. way. Do you love me? Three times he asked him this and he, he just repeatedly tells him to, to take care of his, his sheep, his flock, his flock, to love his sheep yeah. and love his flock. What do you think of this story? I just there's something so beautiful about the fact that they had a meal together. Mm-hmm. Um, it just reminds me of the importance of ritual, um, mm-hmm. and that that we recognize so much more when we're 
actively doing sometimes than just, you know, sitting and staring at Jesus. Sometimes the actual yeah. act of, of, of doing something in the midst of that, that's, that's how they knew him. And then just the, the, the beautiful story of trusting Peter and mm. wanting to have that connection of, you know, make sure my flock's going to be okay. And Peter being Peter, of course, right. you know, gets his feelings hurt because <laughs> right. he's like, Lord, how many times do you have to ask me? I told I you told already, you. I love you. Uh, but a lot of preachers I've heard say and commentators will say that in Jesus asking him three times, do you love me? That's he's sort of making up for the, right. the times, that times that Peter that he he denied him. Jesus. So I think there's something healing in that. Yeah. Too yeah. that if and if we can recognize that certainly right. Peter did too, yes. uh, but I you know we have this very Eucharistic or communion yes. moment when Jesus came in verse 15, thirteen and took bread mm -hmm. and gave it to them and yeah. also the fish so right. not yeah. just fish but also right. bread hearkening yes. back to their yeah. their last Reminds meal me together the, the Emmaus story when it wasn't until Jesus took the bread mm -hmm. um, that they said oh. We know who this is. And so, you know, there's a real temptation, as you said earlier, to kind of combine these stories and make sense of them and figure out, you know, make them what force, really happened. force a Let's connection. Let's put them all together so we know exactly what right. happened. But there's such beauty and such mm -hmm. truth and, and such power in each of these right. stories. And they can all speak to us in, in different ways at different times. Right. And that's the beauty of of the scriptures that right. we don't have to, no, you know, they breathe, they live, right. they, they help us. Yes. They, they continue to speak in ways that when we seek, we, we find, and um, it doesn't imagine have to be either or right. Both and right. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. We had, we covered a lot of material we did. today, we a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always fun to, uh, to talk scripture with you. And I hope that you all have enjoyed, uh, hearing this discussion as well, being a part of this discussion. If you uh, have any questions or want to talk to us, you can send us an email at formation at uccftw.com. And we have a podcast. Right. We look really good on the podcast. We <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we, we started these out as videos, yes. and then now we pull the audio, and it's a podcast. And it's a really easy way mm -hmm. to you know, listen in the car and not have to sit down and search for it on YouTube or something. So I hope that you will take advantage of either one of those options, podcast or the video. Have any questions, contact us. But in the meantime, take care and have a great week. Bye.